starting the recording now. Oh, wait, I started a while ago. Whatever, that's fine. I'll just edit it later. So, last time, we left off with the four of you hitched a ride with Hugo back to towards Hagerdorf. And as you entered the forest, you those of you who are wizards became acutely aware that Shaish is overwhelmingly present in the forest. It's practically I did. It's practically drowning in it. Um, and even those of you who are not magically gifted in sight, as Hugo dropped you off and kind of abandoned you because he didn't want to get any closer, as you crest over the hill, you see the camp outside of Hagerdorf where the four of you, of course, are able to, uh, where the four of you will be returning to, the one of you for the first time, um, it, you can see them burning piles of bodies and there's a very foul order odor on the air of just sickness so goodness without further ado let's get into it oh did y'all want to change your short term or y'all okay still wanting to learn more about the i think we're staying the same okay all right so, we will start y'all at the entrance to the camp. Uh, as you approach the Hagerdorf camp, it is not difficult to see that the garrison is notably smaller than it was when the three of you left. Um, obviously, this is Roland's first time here. But for the rest of you, the population has notably noticeably diminished. The only part of the camp... That seems to have the same level of activity as it did when you left is the dwarves. Um, who have actually made a, quite a bit of progress on the strange machine that they're building. They have a 12 foot box essentially set up. A 12 foot large frame uh, that has all sorts of large chunks of metal and big cases, full, uh, wooden cases full of nails and bolts and all sorts of tools lying around them, and they seem completely unbothered by the malaise that has settled over everything else. But even as you approach the camp, it is not difficult to see that something has taken root here. That's all they've gotten done in the time we've been gone? Shame. We've only been gone for like six days. Shame. This is the Bloody Hounds oh. camp. It looked a lot better when we left. Perhaps we should have stayed left. I don't know, do you like witch hunters? We didn't have to stay in Jettenberg. Well, I mean, we'd have to come back to our resignation and get the soul thing back. I assume it's important, considering how Silverhand wanted them. Um, I guess... Um, is there anyone manning the gate? Uh, there is, the gate is open, there are people watching it, but as you approach, you get the feeling that they probably have not been attacked in a good while. The guy who is, um, in charge of the gate at the moment looks particularly bored, and while he looks, like, he looks down at the four of you, he does look very pale, and he's coughing a whole bunch, but he doesn't really seem to, uh, acknowledge you beyond that. I should have got fresh cloth from Hugo. I will kind of, uh, s like, scratch my chin. Um. So, out here where the Bretonian was, is his area still set up? Yeah, he still or... has his own little, um, I wouldn't call it a 
it's a little nice to be called a tent, but he has his own little personal encampment still set up. And you even see his two personal attendants uh, working outside of it on what basically seems to be a very small personal garden. They themselves don't look particularly great, but they seem to be made of sterner stuff than most of the Imperials. Um, so I will take the horse with me and kind of walk up to those two. Okay. Uh, one of them uh, looks up kind of squinting and he sees you and then his eyes are drawn to the horse and he, uh, he noticeably uh, swallows before elbowing his younger assistant and he stands up and says, Oh, uh, lady, you, you've returned. Yes, where's your master? Uh, he gestures towards the camp and says, He's inside speaking with Rolf, milady. Good, now I can hand this over to you. Alright, the two of them will very cautiously approach the horse. Uh, oh, okay. But as Volo gets close, he starts uh, whispering something in his native tongue. And the uh, the horse actually seems to respond to it decently. It, it seemed a little nervous at first at these two strangers approaching. But once they get close enough, it seems to relax. And they're able to take it from you without any major issue. I will pat it on the neck and I will walk away. All right. Uh, you walk away, and the two of them do not try and stop you. All right, let's get inside away from the demon horse while it's still calm. What are you talking good about? To me? You're going to be the one riding it next. Not in a dozen Sundays. Whatever Warhammer Sundays are called. Festogs. That is not correct, but close enough. I thought that was like Christmas. That is Christmas. We are not to Festag yet. <laughs> Don't worry though, like any good anime, we'll have a Christmas episode. Good. That, I look forward to Krampus, the Warhammer will, subversion. <laughs> that will not take place anywhere near our actual Christmas, because y'all aren't even Halloween yet. Anyway. Um, okay, so we go inside, but I will be cautious about getting near anyone all right uh as you enter into the camp it's it's not difficult to avoid the people who are sick you know and you notice not everyone is sick there are a fair number of people uh who seem still strong of arm and healthy looking who are patrolling or practicing um though they do have a there's definitely a palpable sense of stress about the camp but as you walk in, it is not difficult to see Rolf and Riemann um, talking in the center of camp. They don't seem particularly animated. It seems like a very hushed conversation. But the two of them uh, are continuously glancing at Otto's tower. Yeah, that was what I was going to ask next. How is Otto's tower this beacon of... Um, whatever the... Metal wind is shaman, shaman, um, with this, uh, like deluge of shaish. Um, compared to the last time you were here, it seems notably suppressed. Like there is still, there is still a detectable aura to it of gold magic. Like it still seems like a bastion of metal in a tornado of death. But it's definitely been significantly reduced in um, power since the last time you were here. It seems more like a moat of death uh, metal magic as opposed to a flaming beacon. Um, I will look at, um, um, God's in my brain. It's so broken right now. Wrist, Vertstat, Roland. Vertstat! Okay. 
and say, um, what do you think we should do? Should we go straight to Otto, or should we deal with those two? And who are you indicating with those two? Sir Rolf and Sir Raymond. Mm, I think we should deal with Sir Rolf and Sir Raymond first. Give the lad his horse. I already gave him the horse. He can go outside and get it. <laughs> Alright, y'all want to go interrupt them? I, I want to go about... listen in before interrupting. Exactly. They are talking very... They are being... They are carefully talking. Uh, very quietly. You will need to get awfully close. And probably be stealthy about it if you want to try and listen in on their conversation. Like the just the sounds of people coughing and sneezing and talking throughout the camp is easily going to overwhelm whatever conversation they're having until they could see you, unless you sneak in. What's the modifier for stealth with all this going on? Um, it depends on how you describe you want to stealth close to them. It is a urban stealth in this case, not a rural one. Yes. You have no reason well, to like, sneak up Roland, see those on two him. chaps over there? The one in the big fancy outfit? He's Raven. He's a big noble, so be respectful and all that. And the other one is the captain of the Bloody Hounds. I think you know him? You said yes, you know about them at the very least. Somewhat, but I don't think I've seen him down myself. And when you talk to the noble as... Master Wrist put it. Make sure you say, Sir Raymond, or he will start pouting, and then we don't want that. It's true. I gotta admit, I kinda do. Trust me, you don't. And I give you a hard look. If anything, don't do it just because it makes Verve chi. Because she has to deal with him. It does look like they're having some kind of hushed conversation. You sure we should interrupt? And we should get Roland signed up, yes? Um. If there's the captain talking to him, I'd say that requires interruption. Well, the uh, employer isn't really Rolf. It's Otto Silverhand, the mage in the tower. But if you want Rolf's hounds in particular, we'd have to interrupt, yeah. I'd point to the tower and just say, that thing? Yes. It's quite interesting inside. Maybe not a whole lot out here, but inside, you might be dazzled. I'm going to go around the two arguing men, trying to give them as wide a berth as I can manage. Okay. Um, I'm debating on stealth. Uh, I just know I'm gonna freaking roll like shit. And it's this thing here, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, as you walk past them, Rolf does glance at you, but he. Like, they keep continue talking quietly to one another. N neither of them attempt to intercept you, Roland. I'm just going to wait at the door for the rest of them. I'll walk by and salute Rolf if we make eye contact. I will continue on. Okay. Uh, eventually, his eyes do fall on you. And when you salute, he pauses in what he's saying. And he makes a comment to Riemann and kind of nods his head. And Riemann turns around and sees you as well and then both of their eyes kind of head towards the back half of the camp where they Sigh. see the two wizards and rolf says ah you lot are back then 
Oh, that's right, sir. Ristat will give a wave from the back. I will do nothing. Uh, uh, Riemann's eyes fall on you, Elf, and they're very calculating, but he doesn't say anything for the moment. Uh, Riemann crosses his arms and, uh, says, You lot have missed quite the party. It's been busy around here. Yes, it looks like your numbers have been thinned. Exactly what has been going on. Uh, he nods and says, Had a bit of a ugly run-in with some beastmen while we were harvesting some particular trees of interest. Bit of a nasty scuffle, but we saw him off, though with a fair amount of casualties. Unfortunately, ever since then, people have been getting unwell. Uh, per the bodies burning out yond. He nods and says, I, plus anybody that seemed to have taken a scratch from the beastman got, and he kind of gets a peculiar fa look on his face and he looks to Riemann and he says, what did old Anders call it? And Riemann, uh, Riemann frowns and pales a little bit and he says, he said cannibal syndrome. Who, what now? Uh, Rolf, uh, smile flashes a pretty, uh, genuine looking smile, though dangerous. And he holds up one of his arms to his mouth and mim mimes biting at it. And he says, cannibals, you know the lot. Some of the lads went mad, started eating on each other. I will blink in horror. Ah. Uh, I give Verdstadt a look. How are you feeling, Verdstadt? Overstadt would just give a, a nervous chuckle. Uh, Rolf's eyes will drift across... Oh, that does sound right awful. Uh, Rolf's eyes will drift across the three of you and he says, You haven't been fighting any beastmen lately, have you? No, we only had the one scuffle. Right? It was only the one. Oh, we saw some roaming the woods, but we got out of sight real fast. Oh, yeah, those. Uh, both he and Riemann's hands very too casually fall to their weapon hilts, and, the, and Rolf uh, spits on the ground before looking back and asking, Not any recent fights? No wounds? No. Uh, they look at each other, and then uh, Riemann nods, and the two of them return to more idle positions. And Riemann turns his attention to you, Verbi, says... I take it you came back with success. I will, like, motion my thumb towards his encampment. Yes, I left it with your attendants. He, his eyes sort of drift towards the entrance, but he nods absentmindedly and says, Thank you, I will take a look later. Really? Later? This is a huge thing for someone of your stature. Shouldn't you be going and checking it out now? Uh, I, w I was expecting... Like... More. One of the... Uh, mid and some of the tents behind him, you hear some pretty terrible coughing and hacking. And Riemann glances back towards it and turns back towards you and says, My attentions are needed elsewhere. I must stay focused until this crisis pass. Besides Verve, the horse will be fine. It has other people to eat. Uh, the two of them frown, but don't deign a conversation. Um, I will nod and say, should we go talk to Silverhand? What's, what's he been up to in the time we've been gone? Uh, at this, Riemann shakes his head and Rolf uh, lets out a very exasperated sigh. And runs one of his gauntlets through his hair and says, Well, that's the ticker, see? Silverhand's not here. Hasn't been in a few days. Oh, and, um... Did he perchance say where he was going? He raises an eyebrow at you and he says, Do you know many wizards that tell people where they're going? 
Of course he didn't say nothing. He just often vanished. I nod my head. Sounds very much like the wizards I know, and I will glance at Verve. I don't just vanish. Oh, Rist, go and Verdstadt to the... his room. I'll just be around. Runs off to talk with... You don't know that. Well, are we even able to get into the tower? Perhaps we could... And I will look at Verstep. Find a way of getting him to return. Give me just a sec, guys. What are you doing? Sorry, Chloe opened the door. Um, Rolf shrugs and says, Hey, if you can get in, uh, by all means. Nobody else has managed to g even get the door to budge. We even tried hitting it with a ram. Interesting. Can I ask why you have remained in this place with such... Negative effects. Uh, Remen, at this, Remen nods and actually gives a very hard look back at Rolf. And Rolf rolls his eyes and says, negative effects, she says. Job's a job. It's part of the, if you die on the job, not your day. Ranald wasn't with you, apparently. This is nothing. We had way worse when we were down in Pretonia. I will sigh um, and nod to them and head towards the tower. All right. Uh, Riemann gives you a uh, curt nod, but doesn't say anything else to the three of you. And as more coughing and hacking comes from further in, he starts uh, wandering among the tents with some look of purpose. But Rolf just shakes his head. As if an old man watching a younger man try and waste energy. And he returns to his customary seat in front of his own personal little, uh, much more nicely designed setup. Alright, so the three of you find Roland standing in front of this large door. And the closer you get, um... Those of you who are wizards to the tower, the more it increases in a glow. Like, you can almost see gold light. Only those of you with witch sight. But you can see gold light spilling out between the bricks that make up the tower. Um, but it, 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 it seems very subdued, certainly. Um, when we go up to the door, is there... Um, any, um, like, et since we were here last time, is there any, like, is there any spell or any on the, anything on the door that's visible? No, there's nothing on the door. I will knock on the door. All right, you knock, uh, you hear it echo, and there's no response. I'll try pushing on the door. All right, you push on it. It feels like pushing against a wall made of stone, even though it's wood. I will turn back to the other one, everyone else, and shrug. There's no windows so, on this building, right? No. At least not anywhere you could possibly feasibly reach. Yeah. So that's it then. Well, it would appear we're not getting inside right now. Oh, I thought you were going to do something magical or something. If you were just going to knock, we could have done that. Um, I look down at you, Wrist, and say, um, I had to make sure that it wouldn't, you know, 
blow you apart. You should thank me. Oh, thank you very much. I will go over and knock loudly on the door. Hello, Otto, we're back. Things have gone wrong. If any of you big silver gentlemen want to open the door, that'd be great. Uh, okay. You knock, you shout, um, roll a perception check. Wrist only. No! Oh. Uh, yeah, no response. <laughs> This place is clearly abandoned and there's no hope whatsoever of getting in. Ever. Oh, well. Seems we're at a loss and no one's ever going to show up there ever again. Wonder if Otto ditched once the this circumstance came about. Or at least decide never to come back, like Hugo. find it hard to believe he'd just abandon all this, but it's possible, I suppose. Especially the tower. Imagine how much time, how much money this thing is worth. Well, what is money to someone who can drop coins from his hands out of nowhere? Still, the magical knowledge probably or encased in this building is... Invaluable. Um, well, I wouldn't say so, mainly because me having it would get me burned. Do winch hunters burn halflings? Um, I'm, 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 I'm yeah. sure it's happened. <laughs> If they felt it was necessary, yeah. The real question is, what does it take for a witch hunter to be incentivized to enjoy burning a halfling? Not that much. Really not that much. <laughs> the only species a witch hunter would reluctantly burn is a dwarf. Um, okay, so last thing I'm going to try and do, um, is I was going to try and channel, um, and see if I can put any, like, power into the door, and see if that has any reaction. Uh, okay. It's the only thing I can come up with. You may attempt to channel, if you would like. All right. No. You try bringing in the winds to you, but there is such an oppressive amount of death magic and even metal magic this close to the building around that trying to draw out the wind of heavens, um, the wind of Azir from that mess is just, it just feels impossible. It's basically like trying to stick your hands into a mud puddle and only pull out water. It's very icky feeling, and it's gross, and you can't really do it. At least not right now. Okay. But the tower remains as imposing and impregnable as ever. Oh, well, well. Roland, I guess we better take you to see Rolf and see if we can get you joined up. Are you sure right. you still are you sure you still want to join up after seeing this? I mean, that's a good question now. It looks like you don't even know what you're gonna do. Oh, I should note <laughs> it is getting later in the day. Um, y'all did spend most of the day riding here. Well, I'm sure Rolf's got lots of stuff for us to do. Plus, I don't know if Anders gotten back yet.
Um, I'm going to head to the doctors. Okay. It's not like I can head back today. Got to figure something out. All right, Elf. Uh, is anybody going with Verve? I don't think so. Okay. Well, I mean, Verve just walked away, so. All right, Verve, uh, you enter the medical area, the medical tent, and the moment you step in, you get, uh, roll me a endurance check at minus 10. 